Okay, we already looked at a displacement or distance versus time graph. What we're going to do right now is look in detail at a velocity versus time graph. And look at all the information that we can get from there. I know we talked about a little bit of it last video. And we talked a little bit more about it in class. So I should be able to go pretty quickly through this thing. So if we have velocity measured in meters per second up here, we have time measured in seconds down here. And let's say that our velocity versus time graph, fancy thin line, looks like this. Don't like that thin line. All right, so let's just label a couple of points on our graph. I'll put a dot here and a dot here. That dot is my initial velocity. We call it v sub zero. I'm going to write that down way over here. Initial velocity is the velocity at the very beginning. Up here, this one, I'm just going to call it v. That v stands for final velocity. For the time interval that we're talking about, that's my final velocity. And then down here, t. I don't think I have to, but I will call it time. Now, we've already kind of talked about this, but the slope of this line If I look at rise over run, for the time interval that I'm talking about, my rise is final velocity minus initial velocity, and my run is t. Another way that we can do v minus v0 is to call it our change in velocity over time. Delta V as an equation is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity. It's a good thing to keep in mind. Delta anything is the final value minus the initial value. Well, change in velocity over time we're going to define as acceleration. Anytime you have a changing velocity, you're going to have an acceleration. Should be a review of things that we already talked about. So, from this simple statement, we're going to say that the slope of velocity versus time is acceleration. Slope of velocity versus time is acceleration. So that means this line tells me about my acceleration. So I'm going to be tiny again. That line tells me about acceleration. Here I see that my acceleration, just from this graph, if we take some basic observations, the slope is positive and constant. I'm going to let you think about this, but how do we know that the slope is constant? What does it look like? Well, it looks like a straight line. A straight line has an unchanging slope. So we can say then that the acceleration is positive and constant. And looking at this, if my slope is that and we do a, a basic y equals mx plus b thing, I can say that velocity as a function of time is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. That's y equals m times x plus b, the intercept. This is what I get. Well, really, that's the same equation as this. We're not really playing with equations yet. I just thought I'd point it out to you. The next thing that we can do with this is look at the area. 
And by that I mean... I mean... No, oh, it's an eraser. I mean this part between my line for velocity whose slope is acceleration. Slope equals acceleration. This line for velocity and the origin. Okay, so this area and this area. So what I have are a rectangle and we'll talk about the dimensions of the rectangle and a triangle. And the things that this tells us. So we're not going to get into too complicated of equations just yet. So we're just going to talk about what it means. So looking at this rectangle, it has a width of v0 and a length of t. And this triangle has a base of t and a height of delta v, a height of v minus v0. So, if I take velocity times time, ooh, velocity initial times time, well that's going to give me a displacement. If, if we recall, we said that velocity was delta x over t. So this area is displacement. This area is displacement as well. Now the shape is a little bit different. It's one half t times delta v, but I'm still going to get a delta x from this. So what we can say is that the area is displacement. The area of this graph tells me about displacement. This could be something useful. Sorry, it will be something useful that we use later on. We'll do a lot more examples of this um, later. So let's just look at the things that we know about graphs right now. So our first graph, position, terrible x, position versus time change in position versus time, or displacement versus time. Well, the first thing we know is that the slope is velocity. It's another thing that we can say is that okay, that's, no, that's not what we want to say. moving in a line that looks like this is going in the positive direction. Oh, that's somewhere else. Going in the positive direction away from our origin. Moving in this in the negative direction possibly away from our origin. I'm just saying negative direction. Okay? Those are the things that we can get out of a position versus time graph. The next thing that we have, I'm going to draw it like this, just to mess with you a little bit. I'm going to spend a lot of time with these shapes here in a second. Velocity versus time. I know from velocity versus time that slope is acceleration. The slope of that line is acceleration. Moving in this direction above the origin, that would be a line that looks like this. Is speeding up in the positive direction. 
moving like that, slowing down, but we're still moving in the positive direction. And the reason I know that is because the area is displacement. The area relates back to this graph. So if we look at the area made by this triangle, that area is positive. Now I know it's strange to think of positive or negative area. If I were to have area under the graph, that would be negative area. Okay, Positive area is positive displacement. That's how I know that both times we are still moving in the positive direction for both of those motions up there. I'm going to clean that picture up a little bit. We don't need that. All right, and the last one that we're going to look at, I'm going to say a couple things that are pretty important to us. Is an acceleration versus time graph. Now, the only thing that we are going to see in an acceleration versus time graph is a horizontal line. So as a note, in pre-AP physics, we will always have constant acceleration. It's not going to change. So we don't have to worry about the slope of acceleration at all. <clears throat> but if we look at the area of acceleration, this square is acceleration times time. Well, I know that that's going to be change in velocity. So these are the things that we know about graphs. What I'm going to do right now, really quickly, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because we will take tomorrow and spend a lot of time looking at these graph shapes, is we're going to take something, oh no, like this graph and look at the acceleration versus time for that and the position versus time for that. So we're going to talk through this one. It's one of the more confusing graphs that we have to deal with. Now, the slope of this line I have positive slope and the slope of that line is not changing. So over here, I have positive 